Welcome everyone back to my basement. Today we're gonna modify this Ender 3 V2 by removing the BiQ H2 and replacing it with the HeroMe 5 upgrade and a direct drive extrusion system. Let's get started. The HeroMe 5 upgrade is more than just one upgrade for one printer. It's essentially a whole system for upgrading a lot of different printers with a huge variety of hot end coolers and part coolers. That's why I chose it for this upgrade because I had a very specific combination of fans in mind I wanted to use for maximum cooling and best printing results on the stock hot end system. Essentially what is most important is choosing the right type of base plate which is different for every printer. From there you can use that base to attach any of the Hiromi upgrades that you want. I am linking the parts that I have chosen in the description box and also all of the additional hardware and tools I'm using. Talking about hardware, I'm adding two 50-15 turbine fans and a 40-20 Noctua fan to the hot end. The direct drive upgrade consists of a special backplate and a BMG clone together with a new pancake stepper motor. I will show you later why I'm not using the full size stock motor. The hot end is going to stay mostly unchanged except that I plan to replace the inner throat with an all metal hot end throat to be able to print at higher temperatures. The first step is of course to disassemble the existing hot end setup, whether it might be the stock one or in my case the bi qh 2 Now you might be asking, Daniel, why are you replacing the bi qh 2 It is supposed to be great already. Well, I'm mostly happy besides the fact that I only have one bi qh 2 and I want to have an equal setup on all of my Enter printers in the future and also the bi qh 2 has a few limitations like for one example no adjustable tensioning for the extruder gears. So the disassembly is over so far, the bi qh 2 has been removed. I'm pretty excited that I can give this away to one of you subscribers and you're gonna get the BiQH2 extrusion system with the extended cables which are required to use the maximum height of this printer. You also get the 3D printed parts, so all of the backplate uh, cable covers and all of the screws that you need to mount this to your printer. And I'm gonna tell you at the end of the video how you can win this. I am upgrading the original hot end throat, which is the one at the top to an all metal hot end throat by Slice Engineering, which you can see here at the bottom. If you are still on a stock setup, the PTV tube runs all the way to the end of the throat inside of the throat. There it touches the upper end of the nozzle. One issue with this kind of setup is you cannot print much higher than 235 degrees Celsius without risking to damage the PTV tube and going higher in temperature also will cause gassing out toxic fumes from the PTV. The all metal hot end will fix this because there the PTFE ends in the upper section of the throat and the nozzle only touches metal to metal the end of the throat. The probability of clogging as in the old setup is also reduced quite a bit. This is of course an optional step, it's not part of the Hiromi upgrade but I think the 25 bucks invest for the new hot end throat will give you a broader choice of specialized materials like ASA or nylon which require a much higher printing temperature. The assembly of the Hiromi 5 upgrade is pretty much straightforward if you follow the manual, which is, by the way, written exceptionally well and detailed, so you probably won't make any huge mistakes. All parts fit together really well, there is enough clearances, even if your printer is not super well tuned. By the way, I printed all of the parts in PETG so they are less brittle and withstand higher temperatures without doing any warping. I highly recommend using PETG over PLA. You could also print these parts in ABS if you have an enclosed printer, which might be even better in the long term. What I also will tell you is that a few of the cables going from the extruder to the mainboard, like the extruder motor cable and the fan cables, especially in the direct drive setup, will have to be extended by about 20 centimeters. Otherwise it will be impossible to use the full height of the printer. If you stay on the bound setup, it is not going to be any concern for you though. Finally, why did I go for the new pancake stepper motor over the stock motor? Two reasons. First, it is much lighter than the old one, so we can potentially print faster and second, we need the clearance between the motor and the printer frame, otherwise we couldn't use the whole width and height of the printer. 
Everything is finally assembled and I think we're ready to do some serious test prints over the next couple of hours. But before I show you the results, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of inspiring classes for people who want more than just consuming content, but who also like to connect with other learners and share their creations. Exploring new skills, deepening existing passions, and simply getting lost in creativity is what Skillshare is all about. I'm currently trying to learn some new skills to make better content for you guys. A good class about this is MKBHD's YouTube class. I thought I had it all figured out after three years, but it was really insightful to see how other creators are doing it. The thing that is really great about this platform is that you can focus following the content. There is no distracting ads and no algorithm trying to show you 10 other cat videos while we're actually trying to focus on learning. The first 1000 of you to click the link in the description of this video will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Check it out and thanks for Skillshare for sponsoring this video. All of the initial test prints have been done with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle to test maximum print speed and throughput of material using the new direct drive system. I started with a few calibration cubes to tune my E-steps first and then continued to print a Benchy with the bigger nozzle. This Benchy printed in about 44 minutes, still with quite conservative settings and probably we could go quite a bit faster, but with reduced quality. The next print with a bigger nozzle was the computer case body for my current mass production project. I wanted to see whether using the 0.8mm nozzle would reduce the quality and how much worse it would be compared to using the 0.4mm nozzle. In the direct comparison side by side you can see that the horizontal lines are actually not such a big issue. However, because of the fact that we now only have three parameter layers in total, you are seeing artifacts from layer changes much more obviously. The print time for this part is vastly reduced from 24 hours to 12 hours, which is of course one of the biggest reasons to use bigger nozzles, especially for prototyping where quality is not the most important factor. I also printed another Benchy with the 0.4mm nozzle and directly comparing this to the 0.8mm nozzle result shows there is a visible difference also because of the different layer heights but the overall quality seems to be quite good in both cases. So do I really think that this kind of upgrade is really worth the investment and time? And I can say so far I'm pretty happy with the first results but only time can tell whether this is a sustainable long-term solution to really print more, longer and faster. And I'm gonna tell you in a few weeks how this is all going, especially when I upgrade my second printer. And I also don't wanna forget about the giveaway that we're running. So I've told you in the beginning of this video that I'm giving away the BiQH2 extrusion system that I've removed from this printer. So how to get it is simply go into this video description and click on the link then leave your email address and your name. Um, so the instructions are all there. And then in the first 48 hours of this video, do this and uh, then we're gonna draw a winner. So hopefully getting someone from the subscription feed happy to receive this uh, because I think it's still pretty good, but it has some limitations. And so, yeah, I think it's a good upgrade for someone who has still the stock system and we're gonna do more giveaways in the upcoming weeks so stay subscribed hit the bell notification icon and i see you in the next video bye